Hi, this is Long. Welcome to our video series on search patterns for the most common studies in radiology. Please note that this is an introduction to study interpretation. An enormous amount of detail is omitted for brevity. Continue dedicated reading, seeing as many cases as possible, and keep getting feedback from subspecialists during the course of your training. All right, so today we're going to talk about how to approach the CT chest. Um, this is uh, for this particular video, I'm going to talk mostly about the non-contrast CT chest, but there are similar uh, kind of uh, concepts are going to apply to a contrast enhanced exam, and I'll make some of those delineations. So big picture, like all studies, we're going to get a sense of the patient history, what the indication is, and take a look at any sort of prior imaging, CT, MRI, or whatever else that may potentially uh, have seen part of the chest before. Um, I'm going to assess any sort of limitations. We'll take a look at the localizer images. And then how I like to start this sort of exam, big picture, is taking a look at like the airways, like, like or where the, you know, how the respiratory system works. So like through the airways, into the lungs and pleura. And then ultimately, we're going to look at the cardiovascular system following the venous return to the heart, take a look at the heart and associated structures, and then the systemic vasculature. Ultimately, then I'm going to look at soft tissue structures such as lymph node stations, mediastinal structures, um, various other you know uh, structures that we're seeing. Ultimately, then in the incidentally imaged lower neck, the upper abdomen, and then uh, the surrounding structures of the uh, you know uh, osseous thoracic cage. We're going to take a look at the spine that we're seeing, and then muscular tissues, subcutaneous tissues, um, and that basically covers things that we're going to see both in the, the uh, thoracic cavity and the surrounding incidentally imaged uh, structures around it, uh, which may frequently provide explanatory findings. Okay, to begin. Um, once you've gotten a sense of what, why the study is being done and what we're looking for, I like to take a quick look at the localizer images, um, and especially in areas of the anatomy, superior and inferior aspects of the study, which we, we um, frequently, you know, sometimes you may not see entirely in the axial images. Uh, this can also give you a sense of overall distribution of pathology um, and any sort of support devices to key you in to make sure you're looking at those. All right, and I usually like to start on the axial images um, and then following that organization, I'm following the central airways uh, from the trachea and its lower cervical portion all the way into the main stem bronchi. Then I won't enumerate them all, but following those onto some uh, segmental branches out as far as we can see them um, into each lobe of the lung. And we're looking for luminal filling defects, any sort of abnormal density there. We're looking for thickening, abnormal calcification. We're looking for thickening along bronchovascular bundles. We're looking for obstruction. We're looking for abnormal dilatation, okay? And we're gonna do that for each of the, of the central and then as far as we can see out peripheral airways, okay? And I actually like to take a look at the pleura before I look at the airspace um, or rather the, the lungs. Um, and to do that, I like to scroll through and kind of um, in my head section off each area of the pleura and then just look up and down along the periphery of the lungs anteriorly you know, um, laterally and posteriorly, and then, you know, uh, adjacent to the mediastinum um, centrally. We're going to also, we're looking in there for subtle uh, lucency like air, we're looking for nodularity, calcification, you're looking for pleural fusions, you're looking for things also that can be associated, any sort of those abnormalities can go into the, you know, the fissures. All right, so we're gonna look there. And then finally, we're gonna look at the lungs. Again, I like to think of the lungs, um, you know, uh, kind of section off the lungs or uh, segment them off um, into different areas, whether anterior, laterally, posteriorly. Some people just do anteriorly, posteriorly. But it's also very important to kind of look close to the hilum. It's a very common blind spot. Um, so we're going to look for consolidation, confluent ground glass, um, look for abnormal lucency or for solid lesions. Um, and then kind of going and looking carefully in each of the um, areas of the lungs up and down for that. And then when you're working to look for pulmonary nodules, it can be very useful to kind of go into thicker MIPS and then get in there and just look very closely for small nodules, okay? And, and that's kind of going to be one of the areas where it's very careful to look you know, near the hilum as, as well. Um, you know, and that's going to be very useful. Some people will actually also invert the image and look for subtle nodules in this way, which can make them more, a little bit more conspicuous, all right? Um, I should say that some abnormalities are best seen on other projections, such as at the lung APCs or the lung bases, um, can be well seen more so on the uh, sagittals and coronals than just on the axials, and that can also help problem solve if we're seeing something we're not quite sure what it, what, what it is in the lung parenchyma. All right, so now that we've covered the airways, pleura, and lungs, we're going to move on to some other structures. What I like to start with next is the vasculature, and I just get a sense, especially on a non-contrast exam, sometimes we can't see 
very well any sort of pathology. But we do, I do like to know, and I do like to make it a good habit to follow the venous return to the heart through the SVC, I and mean, also noting that there is venous return more inferiorly to the right side of the heart. And then just noting, you know, the size of the heart, looking at the different chambers, looking if there's, you know, abnormal, um, you know, uh, any sort of abnormality in terms of size or morphology of the heart as best as we see on non-conscious exam, taking a look for pericardial effusion, and then ultimately uh, following, you know, the right side, again, the right side into the pulmonary vasculature, size of the venous, um, the pulmonary arterial vasculature, um, and then, you know, venous return back to the heart through the pulmonary venous vasculature, looking at uh, left side of the heart, ultimately into the aortic root. You can see if, the, you know, the coronary artery origins, you can see extents of calcification there. Um, and then following the aorta up uh, into the arch, into the arch vessels um, and out to the periphery of the site as best we can see them. And then the aorta all down into the upper abdomen. And sometimes you can see some branch, you know, uh, some branches there as well. Um, you can see, you know, you can see in some circumstances, um, intramural hematomas, you're gonna see um, anatomic variations. You're gonna see um, aneurysmal dilatation or pseudoaneurysms. Um, it just, you know, it depends on the clinical circumstance, but a lot of this you can even see on non-contrast exam. All right. So that basically covers kind of the vascular portions of the study. Um, and then once I've taken a look at that, um, I frequently, I then will go into lymph node stations and mediastinal structures. So I actually like to start peripherally and look at the axilla, you know, and near the uh, pectoral muscles like uh, uh, here. We'll look at the lower neck. You can you can actually see this a little bit outside the chest, but frequently you'll see the supraclavicular fossa. You'll see some lower neck areas, and then I'll follow the mediastinal. Look at mediastinal adenopathy. There's many different names, stations and numbered stations, but I won't name them all. But just basically around the trachea, esophagus, posteriorly, you know, kind of uh, in the kind of inter. Infra, um, intramammary distribution and around the heart and you know pericardium uh, more inferiorly and, and then we also be, have to be very careful to look you know at the subcoronal area in the hilum in the hilum bilaterally around the vasculature um, in this more anterior distribution as well so frequently uh, lymph nodes will always be more easily separable from vascular structures and mediastinal structures on a post-contrast exam or an, uh, a contrast enhanced exam so that can be one advantage of doing that um, and then ultimately, once I've taken a look at the lymph node stations, I'm going to look at other structures in the mediastinum. We're going to see part of the thyroid gland here. And, uh, and what we can see of it, we're looking for nodules, we're looking for mass lesions. Um, and then following the esophagus down along its entire course, t trying to see if there's any sort of abnormal dilatation, focal thickening, mass lesions, or involvement from any you know, other pathologic processes. All right. And then in addition to that, we're going to, uh, once we've covered the mediastinal and lymph node structures, I'll look at the... Um, upper abdomen, uh, whatever is image. And frequently you can, you know, if you window tightly, you can kind of see, and this can be, you know, one area where it's advantageous to make the slices a little bit thicker and take a look for any abnormalities in the upper visualized abdominal structures, including, you know, the liver, where you can see the gallbladder and biliary system. You'll see, you know, um, the pancreas, portions of the spleen, adrenal glands, the kidneys, you're really going to see a large proportion of you know, the upper abdominal structures frequently. You're, you're also going to see lymph, you know, potential lymph node stations, retrocural, retroperitoneal, you know, uh, structures in the bowel, and there's, you, know, you can problem solve on various uh, projections there, and just make sure there's nothing there that is incidental or even potentially explanatory um, in the upper abdomen for any sort of uh, potential, you know, or may have initially seemed like a thoracic complaint. All right. So that basically covers the you know the visceral uh, thoracic structures, the incidental lower neck, upper abdominal structures, and then what we'll do is we'll take a look at the osseous and other sorts of structures. So I like to use multiple planes for this, looking at the spine, um, coronals layout, certain of this anatomy, including the upper you know proximal upper extremities, clavicles, scapula, well, the image humerus. Um, you just have to note that you're going to see the lower uh, cervical spine sometimes the upper lumbar spine there. And then I use the various projections, especially the um, sag you know, sagittals for the lateral aspects of the ribs using, you know, um, you know, and then also the, 
going out all the way to the side to see those ribs. Also taking a look at alignment of the spine, any you know gross encroachment on the spinal canal or foramina, the posterior elements, and make sure you sometimes you actually see parts of parts of the lower face or neck, and just being careful to at least you know put an eye on those sort of structures, and then using as needed various projections, including the axials. Uh, you know, for problem solving and, and uh, if you see anything that uh, that catches your eye. And then kind of, again, using projections that lay out the anatomy well for the muscular structures. Um, I particularly, again, like the coronals, uh, coronals and sagittals and just making sure that there's preservation of the normal architecture of those um, going, you know, all around the thoracic cage. And then again, looking at the subcutaneous fat uh, for preservation of those fat planes, uh, as well as any sort of cutaneous lesions we may see incidentally, though those may also be seen clinically. All right, so that basically covers the anatomy of the chest and the sort of search patterns that we can use to cover all those in a systematic way. And then just to give you a brief overview of what we talked about, when we approach this sort of study, we again have to get a sense of the overall clinical context, what we're looking for. We're looking for, you know, and then we're um, going to look at prior studies, get a, get a good sense of everything that's going on with the patient. Um, and then if there's any sort of limitations in sort of motion or street artifacts, of course, that's you know pretty typical to look for every study. And then, again, just recapping, taking a look at the airways, the pleura of the lungs, the cardiovascular system, lymph node stations, other mediastinal structures, and then within that kind of context, looking at the lower neck, the upper abdomen, looking at all those structures, and then all the structures that surround the visceral chest, including the bones and soft tissues, muscular structures. And that basically covers everything we need to, uh, we need to at least look at uh, categorically for the chest.